Hello YouTube. What you're looking at here is the replacement server that I got. Well, it's not really a replacement, more of an addition to the server uh, environment that I have. This pretty much is going to be my main server now instead of the ProLine Micro Server Generation 8. And what you're seeing here is an HP ProLine DL380 Generation 7. It's based around the Socket 1366 platform. It's 2U high, has 8 SFF drive bays. Um, you could have these with options to actually have two more drive cages of four each. It has a built-in RAID controller, all that jazz. And uh, being a Generation 7, it features two 6-core CPUs. So if we take a look at the front here, it's not really that easy to see because it's quite frankly annoying to uh, get this lit. Uh, right here is an indication plate that uh, shows all of the various components in the server and what their status is when the server is turned on. We also have a VGA port right there. Two USB ports here, a UUID connector, well, button here that'll actually flash on the back of the server, so if it's in a server rack, you can easily find it. And there is a part button right there. So the type of drives that this thing uses are these right here. Regular 2.5 inch drives, well, not that regular. These are 10K RPM SAS drives. And they are 146 gigabytes each. So uh, yeah, you can also get these in higher capacities, of course. These are still the mainstream format for uh, server hard drives. And uh, nowadays you can get them... Uh, I think the most mainstream option nowadays is 600 gig each. I mean, it's, uh, that's what we use at work for our latest servers, the Generation 9s. So, uh, so there's that. You can also get them in 900 gigs, 450, uh, 1.2 terabytes. They're also available, of course, in 15,000 RPM. So enough about that. Let's try to turn it around. It's actually easier to turn this, turn the chair around than the server, I think, but... Let's actually do it off camera. All right, so that's taken care of. Nobody wants to see my fat ass on the camera. Anyways, um, so here is the back of the server. Here we have two low-profile drivers, uh, yeah, uh, expansion bays. Here we have two full-size expansion bays. They're all unpopulated at the moment. Another expansion bay up here. We also have two open slots here. This is actually for a uh, second PSU. So I actually have that right here. Hold on a second. These are the PSUs that this thing uses. As you can see, they are very compact. And these are the higher spec 750 watt units. I don't currently have them set up in a redundant mode because quite frankly, I don't need it. This thing doesn't need to be on 24 seven. I don't want it to be a lurking power that, uh, <coughs> that ultimately uh, it's just gonna go to waste, really. So now in terms of ports here on the back, we have two gigabit Ethernet ports right here. We have the ILO management port, a serial connector, PS2 ports, another two gigabit Ethernet ports, a VGA port here underneath the handle for the power supply, two more USB ports, and the UID light that uh, is activated by the button on the front that we just uh, talked about. So what's up next, you may think? Well, let's actually pop it open and take a look inside. Right, so this is a look of the inside of the server. Here you can see the massive heat sinks for the CPUs. This unit uses the Intel Xeon X5650 uh, 6-core CPUs. So I've got a total of 12 cores, 24 threads, because they of course have hyper-threading running at 2.66 GHz each. And we have a bunch of RAM slots populated right here. In fact, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 sticks in total of memory, totaling up to a whopping 80 GB of RAM. And uh, that may seem like a weird number to you, but these servers have a specific layout in which you need to add the RAM. I mean, I have some more RAM here. This is also uh, DDR3 ECC server memory. These are four sticks of uh, two gigabytes, but I can't use these. 
you need to populate these memory slots per channel. You can see the white slots right there. They indicate the start of each channel. And you need to have all of the channels identical in order to actually uh, get the server to recognize all the RAM properly. And the problem with that is I have mixed configuration, of course. I mean, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get to 80 gigabytes. <laughs> I got four sticks of 16 gigabytes, so that's a total of 64, and I had a bunch of 2 gig sticks. So I decided to mix and match as much as I could, and that uh, ended up being 80 gigabytes of RAM. So in the front here of the server we can see all the various fans, because it's a dual CPU server, all of the fan slots are populated. And back there in the front is the SAS backplane for the drives. We have two mini SAS connectors on there because of course each SAS connector can handle four drives and uh, if you wanted to have like an extra bay it is possible to just yank out a DVD drive in the cage that it uh, that is in and just put some drives in there but I would also have to add another backplane and another SAS controller with two channels I'm not going to do that so this is just the way it's going to be there's nothing else really uh, in the front of the server that we can talk about right now if we take a look at the back here of the server, there are actually a couple of screws back here that we can undo. So we can lift the cages out. We can take a look at those. It's just held in by three thumb screws. There we go. Now, in theory, we should be able to lift this out, no problem, there we go. It's basically just a riser, whoops, it's just a riser system, so nothing really uh, interesting to show there. Anyhow, so here we, here we can see the two bays for the power supplies, and here is basically the expansion area of the server. This is a Broadcom controller, so that's the controller for the uh, Ethernet ports. Here we have the uh, SAS connectors for the onboard RAID controller. This is actually the cache module for the RAID controller with a battery backup module up there, which is currently not populated by any uh, batteries, I don't think. Well, it does have a battery in it, but I'm assuming that's probably long dead. I believe this server was shipped in 2011 or something. So it's not all that new anymore, so the battery is more than likely dead. Here we have the primary boot medium. This is a uh, an SD card slot. This is what boots the harp advisor, ESXi. Big heat sink for the uh, North Bridge. And here we have two PCI Express slots that uh, you can put riser cards on, so you can actually uh, use some expansion cards on there. I currently don't have uh, the second riser board. You only have one riser board at the moment, which is this one, which comes with two X4s on this side. They're both 25 watt slots. And here on the other side, we have an X16 length, but electrically, I think this one is also X4, maybe X8, but it's not rated for uh, 75 watt operation, so you can't put uh, a video card in there, for instance. I might give that a shot anyway, just to see if it's possible. But uh, I don't think I have anything that would actually work in that. Maybe my GT610, but I'm not sure. I could give that a shot, honestly, but uh, yeah. So that's basically the uh, external overview of the HP ProLine to DL3 Generation 7, which is now my main virtualization host server. And my ProLine microserver is now dedicated to uh, storage tasks and uh, sharing a bunch of SAS disks through NFS. Which is also something I want to show, just hold on for a second. Uh, there we go. Now that I have an LSI RAID controller in the server again for uh, SAS drives, I now can use more SAS drives. So, uh, I got two of these 600 gigabyte HP drives. They're 15,000 RPM, 600 gig. These are, of course, the large form factor, three and a half inch drives. And uh, these are now the microserver, and they're running great. I put, uh, I got two of these, I put them in Ray 1, so I can have uh, at least some redundancy in there. I might uh, end up uh, putting them in Ray 0 just 
to, for shits and giggles and to see what kind of performance they would uh, get with their 15,000 RPMs. But uh, honestly, I don't really think that's necessary. But yeah, these store some uh, virtualization or virtual machine files as well. I've got a bunch of different hypervirus I want to test on this uh, server, so I need to, needed some extra storage beside the uh, eight uh, 146 gig drives. Because uh, I've got uh, two RAID 5 volumes uh, set up on them. Because I started using four drives at once. I right, four at first, and then I actually added the other drives anyway. So in order to actually convert them to a RAID 10, I would have to redo the entire server, and I just... I don't feel like it, so I've got two 400 gig volumes now. And that's fine with me. But yeah, for additional storage, I got these. In the micro server, connected uh, directly through Ethernet, one gigabit, of course. So there's that. And uh, yeah, I will probably experiment with putting a, a graphics card in the server right now. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, sometimes you just get ideas like that, right? I'm just not sure if I've got anything that will fit in there, but uh, we'll see. If it works, that'll be great, and if it doesn't, that's okay too. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.